Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Lily Wynn. I am currently finishing up my intern year. I start my advanced radiology residency on July 1st. And in this video, I wanna break down my entire radiology residency schedule from my entire rotation structure for the upcoming year, as well as my vacation time, wellness days, call schedule, whether you're applying to radiology residency or if you're just curious about what the lifestyle is like for a radiology residency, I think this video is for you. All right, so first things first, let's talk about how radiology rotation are organized. Unlike some other specialties where you might be on the same service for months on end, in radiology it's pretty varied. So I am going to show you how the rotations are scheduled. Most of our rotations are four weeks long. Some of them are two weeks long and that just really depends on the subspecialty. I'm going to use a calendar to kind of show you visually what it looks like. This is my first time doing this type of video so please bear with me. Most residency programs begin in July and so does mine. My radiology residency begins on July 1st and I start on neuroradiology. That is a four week rotation and then from there I go into, I have my Apple calendar up too to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. And then I go into MSK or musculoskeletal. I should talk about kind of what you see in these rotations. For neuroradiology, we're looking at brain and spine imaging. And then for musculoskeletal, we're looking at bones, joints, and sports injuries. There is construction at my neighbor's house, so if you're hearing that, I apologize. All right, for the month of September, uh, I have two two-week rotations. Those are going to be in ultrasound and nuclear medicine. So September has ultrasound and nuke med. Those are two two-week rotations. Ultrasound's gonna look at things like gallstones, kidney ultrasounds. I don't think it involves women's imaging like ultrasound of um, pregnant women. I think that actually happens later when I do my women's imaging rotation. In October, I have a four-week rotation in abdomen or body. That's kind of like what most people typically think of when they think of imaging, I believe. That's gonna be your CT and MRIs of the abdomen and pelvis. And then November, I'm on a four week rotation of chest and that's also going to be like plain films chest x-rays cts of the chest um, rolling out pe's that's going to be in november december is a procedure month that's when i'm going to be doing ir four weeks of ir i'm a little bit intimidated by that i think that rotation is going to be a little more demanding in terms of hours that's when we're going to be doing a lot of line placements and biopsies i'm pretty excited about that in january i do another four week rotation in chest in february i will do another two two week rotation in ultrasound and body ir i think the december ir is actually in a vascular ir so VIR. The rest of February and March, I will be doing um, an ED rotation. So that's gonna be kind of my first rotation in emergency imaging where I will have to work a swing shift. Then I have mammography, which is another two week rotation. I'm pretty excited about that. It's one of my most interested subspecialties of radiology and I may end up doing fellowship in that, but not totally sure yet. And then for some reason, I have five weeks of neurology after that. Then we only do one week of pediatrics. It's very short and they actually don't allow us to take any vacation during that time. And then I do MSK again, and then end my year with another rotation in abdomen. So that's the rotation structure of what my radiology year will look like. The cool thing is each rotation is completely different and one month I'll be reading CTs, another month I'll be doing brain MRIs. I think it helps in keeping things fresh and helps us figure out what we wanna subspecialize in. All right, let's get into the fun stuff and talk about vacation time. Yes, residents get vacation. Most programs will give you about four weeks of vacation. My program gives us 15 days plus one week off during the week of Christmas or the week of New Year's. Requests for which week we wanted off was already asked for and we submitted those requests about a couple weeks ago. I am not sure which week I'm going to get off yet but my preference was to get New Year's week off. My family and I recently did a New Year's cruise and I think we want to try to do that again. It was super fun so we'll see what I end up getting. I think the key here is really trying to plan ahead. In residency you get your entire year's schedule ahead of time which can be really great because you know exactly what your next year looks like but at the same time you have to have an idea of what you wanna do and when you wanna take your vacation so that you can request them off. I have a wedding in October that I'm attending, so I've already requested for that time off, and I'm going to try to take another longer vacation sometime next spring, maybe seven to 10 days. And then I'll spread out the rest of my vacation days to make like long weekends. There are some caveats to vacation requests. The maximum number of days that we can take off during a four week rotation is five days, and the maximum amount of time that we can take off during a two week rotation is two days. I am planning to stack my 
my vacation so that I can take five days off on one four week rotation and then another five days off on the following four week rotation. Then I can have two weeks off. I don't think I'll do that in my first year, but it's something that I can consider in my subsequent years of training. There are also rotations that limit the amount of vacation that you can take because they want a certain number of residents on and working. Rotations like neurology and procedure heavy rotations often require a certain amount of residents to be working. So during those rotations, I think it's going to be like a first come first serve. Whoever gets their vacation requests in early will probably get those times off. Of course, there are some rotations where you can't take any vacation at all. And that includes our ED float rotations where we're taking call. We only have one week of pediatric rotations, so they don't allow us to take any time off during that time, which is understandable. As far as how I am going to plan to take my vacation, I'll put some of the rules on the side here. We get 15 days total, one week for Xmas, <laughs> For Christmas or New Year's and we also get all holidays off. In the first six months of our residency training we actually also get all of our weekends off. So I'm planning to take some time off in October then I have a week off for New Year's and I'm hoping to take some more time off in April and possibly a little time off in June. So that would cover all of my vacation time. I think at first when I realized that we only have 15 days off in residency I was a little sad because I used to work just three shifts a week as a registrar registered nurse, so I feel like I'm missing all of those days off that I could have had. Something that's really important to add to this is that we have wellness days. In residency, there is something called wellness days. Our program gives us four wellness days that we can take throughout the year. We're allowed to take one wellness day per quarter, so once every three months. It cannot be combined with vacation days. They're basically mental health days with no questions asked. You can use them when you feel burnt out or stressed or just need some extra time. In our program, these can be requested up to 30 days in advance. I think my program really recognizes that happy residents make better doctors and make less mistakes. I think it's a really nice perk to add to our 15 days of vacation plus that additional week during Christmas or New Year's. So then it starts to add up and feel like we have a lot more than 15 days. All right, let's talk about call schedule because that was actually something that I was pretty worried about before starting radiology residency because R1s or residents in radiology in their first year don't know anything when they start radiology residency. They don't have us taking any call for the first six months. So my call actually starts next year. January. From the time that I start on July 1st until next January, I don't work any weekends, no nights, and I don't take any call shifts. That's super exciting. But starting January of next year, I will start to pick up call shifts or what they call buddy call, taking call with another radiology residence who is my senior. I will be assigned about four to five weekend shifts throughout next spring. These weekend shifts will typically be from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and I will be reading everything that comes through the emergency room. I imagine most of the things that we're going to be reading will include stat CTs, going through stroke protocols, and any urgent MRIs. Of course, if anything really crazy comes in, like a massive stroke or trauma, those reads will have to be urgently discussed with the ED physicians. And then starting in February, I will do my first ED swing shift. So that's a full month when I rotate in the ED and do shifts from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. These are supposed to be really formative rotations because we are expected to read everything that comes through the ED, where we'll see a large volume of pathologies and a huge variety of imaging. I am super nervous about my call shifts because so far in my intern year, I have not done any overnight shifts or even very late night shifts, and I've not picked up any call shifts. Feel, I do feel fortunate that a radiology residency schedule is not too bad, especially compared to my intern year where I had six months of rotations where I was working six days a week. It will be so amazing to have all of my weekends back for the rest of this year. But in residency, your schedule is not really in your control. I think that was one of the things that I did not realize prior to starting residency. So much of my schedule is not within my control. I used to be able to take two weeks off at a time really whenever I felt like it as a registered nurse and I did a lot of traveling and that is a lot tougher in residency. I just have to remind myself that residency is a very temporary time frame of my training and once I finish in four years, four years, oh my God. I'll be able to have more control of my schedule. I do appreciate that radiology residency has a more predictable schedule. I think that will allow me to be able to go to the gym more consistently, train for a race, and be able to keep dinner plans. Even though the schedule doesn't seem that demanding, I do think that radiology residency is a lot more mentally taxing. You're basically making decisions all day that affect patient care, and that responsibility is very high and real. Like, is that spot on the lung, lung cancer?
cancer or is this patient having a headache actually having a stroke? Those are some big decisions to make as a radiologist. I hope this video gave you some insight on what a radiology residence schedule looks like. If you have any specific questions about radiology residency, please let me know in the comments. And of course, if you are a registered nurse who is thinking about applying to medical school, I am here to encourage you. I wrote a full comprehensive step-by-step -step guide for this. It is linked in my description of all of my videos. If you have any questions about that route as well, please let me know. Thank you for watching. Thank you.